still silent on the wars that put them there. For InfoWars.com, this is Owen Schroyer. Not my Pope. Leading a frontal assault on... Welcome to the InfoWars Nightly News. It is Tuesday, April 25th, 2017. I'm Leanne McAdoo, and here's what's coming up tonight. Tonight, the establishment tries to regain control of the media, and that means total control of the Internet and the blacklisting of conservative and alternative news outlets that the so-called experts declare to be fake news. Meanwhile, Breitbart is denied press credentials on Capitol Hill, and Google begins to rewrite its algorithm to bury misleading, false, or offensive news articles as they declare InfoWars untrustworthy. All that plus another truck containing radioactive material is stolen in Mexico. That's up next on the InfoWars Nightly News. The reason InfoWars Live has five-star ratings on major third-party sites is because I want products I'm going to use for my family. I take this, my family takes this, and then it funds the operation with the most hardcore, truthful information you're going to find anywhere. So what you find in our news is the same thing you find in our products at InfoWarsLive.com. If I ever forget to take them, like, I'll, I have a noticeable difference. I don't feel good. The nascent iodine is one of the ones that was life-changing for me. Yeah, I actually have just run out of my super female. I had a, a few bottles at my house, and I've been taking it again, uh -huh. hitting the gym once again. Mm. Very exciting, feeling yeah. great, looking good. So, And I know my hair is <laughs> luxurious once again. So obviously, the super female is amazing. I love it. Nascent iodine is essential. Survival Shield X2, if there's one product that I would say is life-changing that I would suggest it's nascent iodine survival shield x2 it's got a five-star rating it's a win-win infowarslife.com that free speech is under unprecedented attack right now in this country. We've been reporting how we've been experiencing it ourselves here at InfoWars. Uh, Breitbart as well has been getting the shaft there as they try to make their way into the establishment there in the swamp. Uh, but now it's also starting to really affect even some mainstream uh, pundits, people who are very outspoken, conservatives, uh, outspoken in their support for President Trump as well. The, the amount of attack coming from the progressive left, it knows no boundaries. So we're going to talk a little bit about that here tonight in the B Block. So, Mr. Uh, the intelligence agencies have six ways to Sunday to take care of a little problem. That's right, Mr. Chuck Schumer is in the news because he comes out saying that Breitbart, if they're given the same sort of uh, equal credibility as the New York Times, then we need to worry about this democracy. Take a listen. We don't have a fact base. If, say, Breitbart News and the New York Times are regarded with equal credibility, mm -hmm. you worry or about this democracy. Or our president or attorney general can spew out facts that are not true. No argument That is me. a threat to democracy. It, 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 is, it, it, is, it is very unfortunate. Uh, and, um, but I'll, I'll, uh, I'll be happy to ride the subway at 4 a.m. with Jeff Sessions. Oh, he might exactly. be a little afraid to do that. <laughs> One, uh, 100 days. There's absolutely a threat to our constitutional republic when we have people like Chuck Schumer coming out and threatening the First Amendment, saying the only people who are allowed to speak 
the truth news are are these uh, long-term establishments like the New York Times. Now, of course, uh, Chuck Schumer was on Morning Joe, and they were talking about the fact that the attorney general was talking about the rise in crime on New York subways, and they went on to say that that was fake news. And Chuck Schumer is making a joke about how, you know, he wouldn't be scared to take the New York subway at 4 o'clock in the morning. Of course, this is uh, discounting all of the accounts of the attacks, sexual assaults, people fighting on the subway. People are just trying to take the subway to get to work, and they're having to watch physical fights on the New York City subway system. So Chuck Schumer just wants... All of you people who've been victims of this rising crime on the subway systems there, you know what, your alternative facts, your fake news, your, your reality doesn't matter. Only thing that matters are these coastal elites. And now, of course, this is after Breitbart News found out that they had been denied a permanent Capitol Hill uh, press credentials. And that's what it is. They just want to protect the little elitist coastal bubble that they have created. Only the insiders are allowed to stay. The Senate Press Gallery's Standing Committee of Correspondents chose to deny the permanent Hill credentials to Breitbart News on Tuesday morning. Uh, Breitbart's been using temporary press credentials for over two years. It's been trying to jump through hoops to meet the press gallery's requirements. The committee has repeatedly extended its temporary passes after deciding that Breitbart has not met those requirements and more recently for not providing adequate evidence of severing its ties with former executive chairman and current White House chief strategist Steve Bannon. So this is what they're saying is that, they, you know, we don't really agree with the timeline of when exactly Stephen Bannon officially left Breitbart. So, you know what, we're not going to issue you press credentials because you're fake news. Meanwhile, they have not asked CNN or MSNBC when they actually severed their ties with the Obama administration or with the Clinton, uh, Hillary Clinton's campaign or with these intelligence agencies um, as were exposed by WikiLeaks in full on collusion for instance, with Hillary Clinton's campaign. So no word there as to how those uh, networks and uh, other establishment outlets were able to meet the press gallery's requirements, but they just do not want the competition from Breitbart and other outlets like it coming up and kicking, kicking the legs out from under these establishment coastal elites who have no idea what's actually going on in this country because they live in a bubble. And now Sean Hannity is facing the attacks as well. Uh, this is unprecedented effort to silence anyone who goes against the mainstream leftist progressive agenda. Barack Obama's uh, former press secretary actually said that he would reemerge if he sees some lines being crossed. Um, but Hannity comes out and, and in his opening segment, he's like, look, I can no longer have the slander against me slide. He says he's hired a team of some of the best attorneys in this country. Of course, he's uh, been accused of sexual assault uh, by a woman who again and again, um, they have proven that it's all baseless lies. And he says, look, I'm going to get go after her hardcore because he can see what happened with Bill O'Reilly. It doesn't matter if you have the top uh, news program for you know decades, you're gone. So he sees that this attack is coming against him, and he says this is um, he wanted to address this well-orchestrated effort by the intolerant left in this country designed to silence every conservative voice and by any means necessary. And so he went on to explain to his audience about uh, the tactics that are right out of Saul Alinsky's handbook, Rule for Radicals Playbook, something that we've been talking about again and again, hoping people take notice of these orchestrated campaigns. Uh, for instance, the ongoing attack uh, of advertisers saying, why are you putting your advertisements on Breitbart and these other outlets like Infowars, forcing them to pull their advertising. That's one way of silencing your opponents is by taking away their funding. So then they can't afford to do business. And so that's one of the uh, rules um, for radicals out of Saul Alinsky's playbook that is being used to attack conservatives in this country. Um, but let's go ahead and hear just kind of the closing portion of Hannity's segment. They have tried to undermine the outcome of this election since November 9th. Please know this isn't about me. This is about the left concocting boycotts all in an attempt to silence prominent conservative voices. If we don't take a stand now, if we allow this to happen now, I am telling you, America as we know it, freedom of speech as we know it, is over. Let's stop the boycotts. Let's stop si uh, silencing opposition voices. Let all Americans make their own decision. 
And you see, this is truly tolerance. And this is why these radical leftists take advantage of that because they know that, you know, we're going to play nice and we're not going to silence you and we'll allow you to have your free speech because it's so important to us and we believe in it so much. They know that we are going to take that that stance and the kindness and the tolerance and they will twist it around and not be there to defend you when your constitutional rights are being violated. Perfect example, the lawyer for the Berkeley Republicans who are suing their university in that Ann Coulter case, she's slamming the ACLU for their absence. She says, where are they in this room? She actually used to work for an ACLU chapter, I believe in California. So she would know, she would know that they, they're, they're there, the American Civil Liberties Union, they're there to protect uh, the American people, but they're not there when it doesn't fit the leftist progressive agenda. She said, um, this is uh, attorney Harmeet Dillon. She's representing those Berkeley College Republicans. She says, I don't see the ACLU here in this room, which is unfortunate. And then she went on to list several prominent Democrats who actually joined her in that effort saying, you know, hey, we might not agree on Ann Coulter, uh, Donald Trump, we might not agree on our politics, but this is very important that we need to protect the First Amendment and, and free speech. She said she's had dozens of people from all over the country, lawyers that don't even know her, who say, we support you. We don't agree with Ann Coulter, but it, this is important and it's time for us all to fight for this and to stand up for our First Amendment rights because you never know when the tables can be turned and the party in power or the historically oppressed party changes. So she went on to say the ACLU, uh, you know, the fact that they weren't there was very unfortunate and we should not stand it if it were happening on a conservative college campus and it were liberal students who, whose views were being marginalized. And that's absolutely true. And would, would people stand for it if that's what was happening? Absolutely not. They, they're not coming in uh, with their... Um, flags and their, their pepper spray to shut down these liberals who are coming to campus with points of view that, frankly, I would disagree with, but I'm not going to go there and shut it down. And we don't see Antifa showing up to shut it down um, either. So she remarked in that context, the ACLU's absence at Berkeley was noteworthy. Of course, we've pointed this out. You know, Berkeley was kind of the uh, birthplace for free speech on campus, and now they've completely done a 180. She was part of the uh, San Francisco Bay Area chapter of the ACLU. Now, critics say the ACLU has been drifting in a left direction for many years, often abandoning its absolute adherence to basic civil liberties in favor of a state-centered, redistributionist, and identity-inflected concept of rights. And that's what they're really pushing for this entire country, is that free speech ends where my feelings get hurt. That's the new sophisticated interpretation of the First Amendment that they are really trying to push on college campuses and saying our feelings matter and that should trump your right to free speech and to say whatever you want, which is absolute insanity. Now, political goes on to, they actually tracked what's happening here with this media bubble and they say it's worse than you think. They wanted to know how did big media miss the Donald Trump swell? So they crunched the data on where journalists work and how fast it's changing, and the results should be worrying. As of 2013, only 7% of journalists identified as Republicans. No surprise there. Most journalists are Democrats, and they donated directly to Hillary Clinton's campaign. Um, so they go on to say how the national media really does work in a bubble. Uh, it's concentrated heavily along the coasts. If, you, if you're a working journalist, odds aren't just that you work in a pro-Clinton county, odds are that you reside in one of the nation's most pro-Clinton counties. And it used to be where the news was kind of all over the country, sort of spread out, where you would have the newspapers and these small journals, they'd be all over the country. And now that's really not happened as the media has um, done away with a lot of jobs, at least cut in half the amount of people that are employed by newspapers and other publishers because people aren't getting their news there. They're going to the digital uh, internet publishing and broadcasting. So those jobs have really seen a boom. And 73% of all of those internet publishing jobs are found in uh, Boston, New York, Washington, uh, Richmond Corridor, or the West Coast that runs from Seattle to San Diego onto Phoenix. So it's true. They really are these coastal elites. It's in a bubble. And that's why they have no idea what's going on with the rest of the country. That's why Hillary Clinton lost because she thought all she needed to do was go to these coastal um, 
pro-Clinton counties, and she failed. And it'll be interesting to see how political moves in the future, because they've named an investment banker as their new CEO. <laughs> so uh, this is the digital news pioneer, Politico. Um, they hired veteran investment banker Patrick Steele. And before joining, Mr. Steele served as an official in the Agricultural Department, a special assistant to President Bill Clinton. Mr. Steele donated heavily to Democratic candidates, including Hillary Clinton. And so we can already kind of see where he's going. Uh, but he says, you know, he's a businessman and uh, Trump's administration has been very good for the news business so far, of course, because they're constantly just taking his words and spinning them out of control. Wikipedia, as their founder there, is now going to fight fake news with a Wiki Tribune site. So they are going to, this is going to be an online publication. They're going to aim to fight fake news by pairing professional journalists with an army of volunteer community contributors. Let's hope that this doesn't uh, spiral out of control like the AI uh, teen on Twitter who quickly became a Nazi racist after trolls gained the algorithm. But they say Wiki Tribune is going to be news by the people and for the people. Um, it will be the first time professional journalists and citizen journalists can work side by side. They'll write stories as they happen, editing them live as they develop. And it'll be backed by a community checking and rechecking all the facts. I remember in school, I we would be absolutely lambasted by our, our journalism instructor if we dared to cite WikiLeaks as a source. So it'll be interesting to see how Wiki Tribune is able to fact check quickly because as we know, there's tons of trolls that go in and are able to change uh, Wikipedia entries. And again, here with the skew and the bias, I wonder what angles are gonna be taking on Trump. Um, he came and said, the founder said, someone I know convinced me to give Trump 100 days before making up my mind. But then on day one, Kellyanne Conway came out and said her alternative facts line. And that's when I really decided to move forward. So obviously we have just another person in the publishing business who is anti-Trump, uh, anti probably conservative values. We've got Google rewriting their algorithm to bury fake news. We've reported on this. Uh, but now they're saying that they're reconfiguring the algorithm so that so-called fake news does not appear at the top of search results. They called it rare and sweeping. Uh, so basically, they are going to allow users to click on articles and say, you know, report inappropriate predictions, report articles. And they go on to say that the, the large fraction of queries, for instance, Hillary Clinton's health, represented a very small percentage of their traffic but they were important queries. So even though, <laughs> even with them clearly fixing their algorithm and their search results to game the election for Hillary Clinton, it still had that much of an impact on, on, on uh, Hillary Clinton and Google search results that they are now doing this rare and sweeping change of their algorithm so that they can control the outcomes because it got away from them. So this is all just uh, very interesting indeed there to see, just to see what kind of truth and what kind of reality we're going to be living in here soon in a few years because they've already reported how algorithms are truly uh, predicting and controlling society in the way that we think because people just put, a, put in a search result or certain articles that Facebook decides to send them and this is what is really shaping the mentality of, of the consumer. And they know that, and they lost control this last election, but they want to get it back. Uh, Kit Daniels has the story that the New York Times reporter is actually admitting that Donald Trump is more open to the press than Obama. That's right, the most transparent administration ever. Um, this was the Times' Glenn Thrush, who's also someone who was colluding with the Clinton. Um, but he said, President Trump is more accessible to the media than his predecessor. That's uh, very key to note. And uh, the AP goes on to say that the Obama administration was the worst they'd experienced in decades. InfoWars has partnered with Defender Body Armor to bring you a new state-of-the-art line of advanced, highly tested body armor from InfoWarsStore.com. Defender Body Armor is certified to protect against all handgun rounds and even armor-piercing FN 5.7 pistol rounds. The secret to Defender Body Armor is its proprietary processing technology that disperses more kinetic energy at a rate higher than any other traditional body armor. 
using one of the strongest synthetic materials ever created called ultra high molecular weight polyethylene. Defender armor is also super compact and lightweight. There's a reason the Department of Defense chose Defender to manufacture their new line of advanced lightweight armor. It works. Defender body armor is made right here in America and has received the highest level ballistic resistance certification from an authorized NIJ ballistic laboratory. Defender body armor is now available through InfoWarsStore.com so you can defend yourself, your family, and finance the info war against the globalists all at the same time. A total 360 win. You provided Alex with the caveman. Well, so we've been formulating this stuff for a while, and we've been getting these different flavors, and you know, oh, I don't know about this one, oh, you know, and uh, and so I've been taking that stuff, and and I'm an old man, I'm 42, uh, I work out five times a week, if not more. I hear you're and, okay in jujitsu. Oh uh, no, I'm, I'm, I hear. That's no, what I hear. no, I'm not. I'm terrible. <laughs> I'm terrible. But the point is, is that I have a lot of aches and shoulders, and you know, this weird joint stuff that I've had issues with for years. And uh, the, th this this bone broth, the caveman bone broth, along with uh, our joint formula, has just worked magic for me. And that's just, yeah. I, I, you know, that's just from from my personal experience. Um, I think they're great products, and I think if anybody else has those issues, that uh, you should definitely you owe it to yourself to check it out. If I'm wrong, then hey man, write me a, write me a mean letter. But let me tell you, they work for me. And so, yeah, they work um, for me too. I was actually we were talking about this earlier. Do and I play basketball, and I'm just now like for the first time in my life, I'm 27 now. After I play basketball, my knees are barking. Uh -oh. like it's, yeah. yeah it's, it's, <laughs> and so, so, but the but the, but the bone broth and the joint formula, like you just said, you combine those two. I felt the difference immediately. I felt it immediately. Yeah. yeah, and it actually tastes good. Like, I'm really picky, and I will drink it. It tastes good to me. I love chocolate, so I really like the flavor of the caveman. So, I mean, if the blown, 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 uh, if the <laughs> bone, bone broth, broth. <laughs> bone broth, <laughs> if the bone broth is really that gross, I mean, I would never have known because it tastes really good. And my favorite is the super female vitality. So, ladies, get yourself some super female vitality if you haven't already because it seriously, it just gets me going. I mean, I'll take a whole bunch of that stuff before I go well, out and do it my. Maybe get it for your wife then too, <laughs> yeah, or girlfriend. Right? <laughs> I, I go and take a bunch of it before I go do man on the street, and I just start running, zipping around running right into the action no fear nothing so well that's a big primary <laughs> part about uh you know find the globalist is making sure that we stay healthy and stay clear-eyed and and stay honest and stay humble um i hope that we do that here at Infowars. uh we got a lot going on and we're in the middle of the fight so we really appreciate it when anybody supports us uh, either by uh, purchasing our products or you can even go on to our store and, uh, and and donate um we're we're doing this by the skin of our teeth i know it looks like we're in a uh, a billion dollar studio but uh, alex has never taken one cent of uh, uh, uh borrowed money at all whatsoever this is all money that's come from you the listeners so you've literally built this place uh you know built this place with your compassion and built this place with the the, the support that you've you, you've sent us so from the bottom of my heart i appreciate it because i know we wouldn't be able to do this and we wouldn't have a voice um if, if it wasn't for you so once again we got to thank the listeners for their uh for their steadfastness in supporting us. And uh, even even when we make mistakes and even when we're not right and even when we might go a little bit crazy, you guys stick with us and I, I appreciate that. <laughs>
the visas and the passports. You can't accept that. But they overturn reality and act like Donald Trump and myself and others are crazy for simply wanting to vet people coming in from these Islamic countries. But you know what? I actually welcome all this because the full story is on Infowars.com, all the documentation, and the larger video I shot. The owner of Chobani is from Turkey, and Turkey has fallen to a caliphate. It's now threatening to invade Europe with more Muslims if they don't submit to what's already uh, uh, happening in the EU with Muslims. It's just crazy how we're held hostage. And it turns out this guy is on the most elite board in the world, the Federal Reserve Board of New York, that Congress can't even audit or find out about that was set up in 1913. It is the Federal Reserve Board of New York that runs the Federal Reserve, and it's private. We have the famous clip, we've got to play it here, where... The outgoing head of it was on Lair News Hour, Alan Greenspan, and he said, the rightful place of Congress and the president with the Fed is nothing. We're our own fourth branch of government. We do whatever we want. What is the uh, proper relationship? What should be the proper relationship between a chairman of the Fed and a president of the United States? Well, first of all, the Federal Reserve is an independent agency, and that means basically that uh, there is no other agency of government which can overrule actions that we take. So long as that is in place and there is no evidence that the administration or the Congress or anybody else is uh, requesting that we do things other than what we think is the appropriate thing, then what the relationships are uh, don't frankly matter. And uh, It's not even government. So this guy is a foreigner on the Federal Reserve. No wonder hundreds of billions of dollars of the banker bailouts gone to foreign banks and, and then they say it's all secret. No wonder McClatchy and others report that hundreds and hundreds of billions of dollars from the bailout went to Warren Buffett, who promoted it, of taxpayer money. I mean, this guy is in our business on the Federal Reserve Board, owns Shabani yogurt that, get, that gets its money out of school lunch program money. It's not even Greek yogurt, it's Islamic yogurt. The guy has an Islamic agenda, and now he thinks we're just going to get all scared and roll over because he filed some big lawsuit on us. In the lawsuit, it says that we're lying, that no TB's been brought in by the refugees. And you can argue technically by the company. No, he lobbies to bring the people in that have got the TB, unvetted from Islamic countries, and then they go to work at the place that he owns. So that's two separate deals. So I, let me clarify and retract. Chobani isn't bringing in the workers, even though they asked for the visas. Yes, they really are. The guy that owns it is lobbying for it, doing it with the UN, involved with the UN program, with Peter Sutherland, and he's on the Federal Reserve Board. Then we've got all the Gulan schools and the rest of it taken over the private schools by the billions. I mean, just the Islamic influence and invasion is crazy. It's an authoritarian culture. It works inside combines and inside elite groups, and it fits like a hand in a glove with the whole globalist, crony capitalist system we're living under. So understand that. Alex Jones in InfoWars is being sued by a foreigner from Turkey who sits on the private Federal Reserve NYC board that runs the whole show that Congress can't even audit. Now you ask yourself why that is. Because he works with George Soros and Peter Sutherland. He is involved with the Clinton Foundation and the Clinton Global Initiative running collapsing nation states and bringing in the Islamic hordes. That's a fact. So quite frankly, my gut tells me this is a big victory. And Mike Cernovich called me this last night without me even talking to him before he even heard my views. He said they have screwed up doing this, my God. He says it's crazy he's not bringing in refugees when he is. And they're trying to muddy the waters and say, I'm hurting the community in Idaho. Imagine this, the private run for profit Federal Reserve that hijacked this country in 1913, that Ron Paul and Ronald Reagan and so many others fought, he is now having more and more foreign board members on it. If that isn't globalism where foreigners run your life, I don't know what is and is now suing me because I reported on other reports where the, the Islamists now have pled guilty to the assault, which for a year they said didn't happen. These are refugees, they were brought in, he's pushing it, it's in the town where it's based, the media denied it and said it was a hoax. It comes out, they plead guilty two weeks ago, and then what happens? Bam! 
We'll call Alex Jones fake news. We're already branding him as that, demonizing him. We've already got a demonization campaign going. Just put it on there and say he's fake. None of it's true. NBC News, Alex sued for publishing fake news. No judge, no jury. Hadn't been convicted yet. But I'm lying. I'm lying. Muslims never raped anybody. Muslims never blow anybody up. Muslims are just poor little sweet babies fighting the big feminist marches and all the rest of the crap. Support us. Pray for us. We're in this together. Infowars.com forward slash show. Spread that link and know this. Despite all their censorship, all their attacks, everything you see about them lying about us in the news, they know we're bonafide. They know we're real. That's why they're panicking. Infowars.com forward slash show. An act of resistance for the republic. An act of defiance so the West doesn't fall to the second Islamic invasion. Support us, spread the word, and know that I'll never surrender. I'm so honored to be part of this defense of the Republic, this defense of the West, this defense of Christianity. It's really happening, though. This is 21st century war. I'm on my horse fighting. I need your prayers. I need the provisions. I need the support. But I am very, very honored to be here. We are seeing a major jihad. A jihad has five pillars. It's political. It's, you know, it's, it's religious. It's, it's militarily. It's, quote, donations. It's manipulation. It's deception. And I am under massive, sustained jihad attack. I'm under Islamic holy war. And Ergon announced a month ago, he said, I'm going to hit Europe with bombings and shootings and mass killings. It was in the news. He said, you will do what I say and let more Muslims in. You will submit to us or I will flip a switch. And the shootings and car murders, running people over all began. And then Trump said it was wrong. And the news said it wasn't Islamic. Ask yourself how our media is so controlled that they won't tell you when something's Islamic when they're yelling Allah Akbar and ISIS has taken responsibility. We are under direct Islamic attack. They've got Islamists that's now following me around, folks. We're going to be exposing some of that very, very soon. I mean, they are on my ass. They mean business. Our, our country basically has no immune system. We're wide open. We're so sharing. We're so open. They've used our openness to take advantage of us. They have used our open society. It's time. It's time that we, as Christians and Americans, stop being tolerant of people that aren't tolerant of us. You want to take me on? The public understands this is happening and you've miscalculated, you're going to make me an even greater champion of liberty. I just hope I'm up to it. So I need your prayers, everybody. So I just pray for Christ to give me guidance and, 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 and discernment. I pray for your prayers and I humble myself before God and just hope that all of us can repent and seek God's face in the quiet place the most high and come together and heal our land of, the, of, the, of just the disease that is upon it, of the Islamist, globalist, liberal system that's trying to pull down civilization and have total control. Thank you, God, for all the prosperity. Thank you, God, for this great system you gave us that's now been overrun and has been turned against us. And just please help the people awaken and may brush fires the minds spread across the globe and may Islam have a reformation and hopefully reform itself. And may we all come together and live in peace. I'm Alex Jones, and this is The Info War. You traitors claiming I'm a Ruski agent, say it to my face and I'll break your nose. I'm sick of it. I will stomp your head in the ground, you traitorous maggots. While we go under Obamacare, North American Union, conquered by European banks, announcing our kids don't belong to us, total bondage, total surveillance, and you want to shoot your mouth off about me being a Ruski agent, I will stomp your head in the ground. Never water yourself down just because someone can't handle you at 100 proof. It's the Alex Jones Show, because there's a war on for your mind. Oh, I, was, oh, I wish we'd go back to the days. I'm telling you, of just getting my satisfaction out in the street. You pick a sword or something. Why is the fungus? Why is the mold? Why is the yeast taking over? What is going on? What has changed? Dr. Group, the new product will sell out definitely in days. You've been testing it for almost a decade. You've got rave reviews from your patients who've been taking it privately at your clinics. MycoZX supports normal fungal and yeast balance proprietary blend of herbs and enzymes made with high quality ingredients. It's available at InfoWarsStore.com. We also have free shipping, orders $50 or more, and 10% off. We sign up for auto ship additionally on top of that. And then you fund the organization dedicated to the truth and get something you and your family absolutely need. But you should consult your healthcare provider. This is not a game. This is not a joke. Especially if you have really big uh, yeast levels or fungus in your body. Uh, you know, there can be some responses to this as you're flushing it. But uh, why is this product so powerful? What does it do? So we've been doing research just like you have on what's currently going on. Obviously, we stay ahead of the game because our job is to protect and address the root cause of the problem, which is why I've been... Now, we want stuff for our own kids. Hey, well, we've been... This is why we've addressed...
the president, you know, let's address the root cause of America's health problems. But getting back to fungus, it's becoming an increasing epidemic that's only getting worse. Killing I've bats been, everywhere, other animals, oh, squirrels uh, you know, are dying. Funguses were used as bioweapons. So uh, why is it suddenly field. killing so many mammals? Yeah, fungus is a growing epidemic. And I've been testing this formula and, and making changes to this formula for over 10 years. I've had nobody. Here's the thing, Alex. When you go to the doctor with a list of symptoms, you, there, you can look at fung symptoms of fungus overgrowth in the body. It's going to show, you're going to pull up over 100 symptoms. Everything from brain fog, lack of energy, insomnia, headaches, bowel problems. Joint pain. It's, it's joint pain. It's linked to Crohn's disease. Infertility. What about the obesity epidemic? I know they test people that are really obese and, and like they're, they're just colonized by fungus. Le yeast overgrowth. I have a study right here by Jacob Tiedelbaum at the Fibromyalgia and Fatigue Center in Dallas. Yeast overgrowth is linked to an average weight gain of 32 and a half pounds. What doctor... By the way, folks, look, I'm not bragging. We game-changed the presidency. We game-changed the New World Order. Globalism is falling because of you. You are the info war. We, listen, this is religious for me, okay? I do not bring you something unless I absolutely believe in it. And if we were reigned with a billion dollars, I would turn 99% of it against the enemy. I want to defeat them. I'm ready to give my life. Everybody knows that against the enemy. Please. We only have a limited supply of this. I want to get your reviews. I want to hear what you have to say. For me, it's been incredible. Myco ZX, antifungal, uh, antifungus, uh, anti yeast. Get it today. Limited run. It'll be months till we get more. Infowarsstore.com, Infowarslife.com. Myco ZX feels great with the bottom defense. Infowarslife.com or AAA 2533139. And you can't support an organization that didn't fight harder. Look at the response we're getting. We were changing the world together. You are the Infowar. God bless you all. Let's go to Devon in Florida. Devon in Florida, you're on the air. Great. Hey, thank you so much. Listen, I have bought your product, and I got to say they're amazing. Thank Anyone you. who's on the fence, buy it, because I've, I've got Caveman, Superman Vitality, Secret 12, Vitamin Mineral Fusion. I've got the body armor. Wow, thank you. Wow. You're I the mean, type of listener that makes it all possible. Which nutraceutical so, does you like best? I really like the, the Vitamin Mineral Fusion, to be honest. That's it's amazing. Really incredible. I drank it in the morning, and I swear to you, I felt incredible. Like, I haven't felt weak. My morning was fantastic, and I, and I love you guys. I love the info. Worst crew, and I just want to, yeah, I want to, I want to take this opportunity to tell anybody out there who's on the fence, just buy it. You will love it. I'm telling you, I've never bought a bad product. What you find in our news is the same thing you find in our products at InfoWarsLife.com. It's a win-win. InfoWarsLife.com. This is Mike Cargill, the owner of Central Texas Gunnerworks, also on the executive director for Texans for Accountable Government. And I want to let everyone know that we have a serious problem in the state of Texas right now. Around the country, um, you have a lot of states that are looking for constitutional carry. There's a difference between constitutional carry and also permitless carry. Constitutional carry says that, hey, you know, the Constitution says if you can own it, you can possess it, you can carry it. Well, then there's some state, well, state of Texas is actually trying to pass permitless carry. And I'm trying to alert everyone, this is something that we cannot let happen because it comes with some type of restrictions. Um, this, what this is gonna do is this is gonna set us back um, like 20 years. We're actually going to spend 20 years trying to change these laws if this bill, which is House Bill 1911, actually passes. So it comes with some type of restrictions. So it says that, hey, you have to be a resident of the state of Texas for six months. Uh, that means that anyone that's visiting Texas will not be able to have a handgun on them while they're here in the state of Texas. If you're here visiting, you know, whoever, you're here for a festival or whatever, you can't have a handgun in your vehicle. That's going to remove that, remove that ability for you to have that uh, inside your vehicle. Also, you have to be 21 years of age. Uh, you have, cannot be charged with a felony. You cannot be charged with a Class A or B misdemeanor charge. Uh, well, it takes a, you know... It's very easy for someone to get charged with something. You can walk outside this door um, and you can fart and you can be charged with disorderly conduct. So it, it, <laughs> this is something that just cannot happen. Also, uh, you can't be a fugitive from justice. Uh, you cannot be a chemically dependent person. Uh, incapable of exercising sound judgment. Uh, there's a lot of different things here. Uh, you can't be convicted in the last five years of any class A or B misdemeanors. Um, 
and you have and the, the the funny thing is you can't owe back child support uh you cannot you know owe any money to the state of texas so all the business owners out there you own a business they're saying that if you file your your sales tax report late or you forget to pay that sales tax you will lose your gun rights and then if you have a license you'll have to petition a judge to get those rights back this bill is terrible it's house bill 1911 uh and we've we got to get some changes done this bill or kill this bill we have got to support house bill 375 that is the true constitutional carry bill 375 and i'm encouraging everyone to contact uh state representative phil king who is the chair this gentleman will be the the person that will single-handedly kill constitutional carry if it does not come out of his committee this week we've got to contact his office that's state representative phil king 512-463-0738 that's 512-463-0738 and let him know we've we want constitutional carry we do not want 1911 we want house bill 375 once again, my name is Michael Cargill. I'm the executive director for Texans for Accountable Government. This is Michael Zimmerman for Infowars.com. I'm here with Jason Kessler of Unity and Security for America, who is from Charlottesville, Virginia, and is going to be talking to us today about their vice mayor, Wes Bellamy. That's right. So tell me a little bit about Mayor Bellamy. Okay. Vice Mayor Wes Bellamy is a guy who has been pushing to remove this Confederate monument in downtown Charlottesville of Robert E. Lee. And some people have been trying to make him the figurehead for removing monuments. He said that if he's successful removing Robert E. Lee, he's going to move on to Thomas Jefferson, who is one of the figureheads of Charlottesville. He founded UVA, and his home, Monticello, is in the Charlottesville area. Uh, Wes Bellamy is a very anti-white person. Uh, I looked into his background after he was going after a UVA professor who called Black Lives Matter a racist organization. And it turned out that Wes Bellamy had all these tweets where he was saying, white women are the devil. My favorite thing about being down south is seeing the look on the face of little white men when they have to look up to a black man. He said, uh, he hates white people, he hates seeing them around town. Uh, talking about a sleeping woman, he said it ain't rape if she moans. He said a lot of despicable things, which lead you to believe that that had something to do with why he's so obsessed with tearing down monuments of Robert E. Lee and Thomas Jefferson. So the mainstream media is treating him, though, as some sort of civil rights figure, someone who's fighting for, you know, or against racism. But really, he's as big of a racist as anyone. Oh, yeah. Not more so. He's definitely a big-time racist. He's, uh, he was recently on CBS This Morning where they were whitewashing this uh, tweets controversy. And it's a big deal. He was forced to step down from the Virginia Board of Education over these tweets where he was one of only nine people deciding what goes in little kids' textbooks. He was also forced to resign from his teaching position at Albemarle High School because he was actually tweeting the it ain't rape if she moans while he was teaching little kids. That's sickening. Yeah. And you've been fighting what, uh, Mayor Bellamy for a while now to get him out of office in yeah. Charlottesville. Yeah, I have. We, we did a petition drive to try and remove him from office, which got over 600 signatures. But the problem is, is Charlottesville is an incredibly liberal city. The judicial system is all stocked with their cronies, and we weren't able to get the outcome that we wanted. And for exposing this figure in government, you've been able to racist yourself. Yeah, it's outrageous. They, they try and cover for him by saying that I am a racist because I ha share memes of Pepe the Frog, you know, like millions and millions of people do. They don't understand youth culture. They don't understand uh, right-wing culture. And they throw a lot of accusations around because they don't want to accept responsibility themselves. Well, even the official Hillary Clinton campaign website had a Pepe the Frog, an explainer, mm -hmm. saying how he was a white nationalist symbol. You know, something that originated on 4chan, they're saying is this symbol for racism, symbol for white nationalism. Yeah, Pepe can be appropriated by lots of different people. And, you know, you, you could put a swastika on Pepe and make him a Nazi. Yeah, you or could put you a could, swastika uh, on anything. Put a Hillary for America, you know, thing mm -hmm. on Pepe and make him a Hillary icon. Um, so this, this kind of stuff is absurd, and I think you hit on a good point that they're so out of touch mm. with youth and internet culture and reality that they go down these 
chases of thinking, you know, everything's racist, everything's, you know, sexist. But uh, I've, I've watched a video, and we'll cut some of that in here, of you speaking to the city council in Charlottesville, and all these Black Lives Matter people are freaking out. They're holding signs. These people are actually supporting the behavior of West Bell and me mm -hmm. and going after you in response. Yeah, it's, it's insane. There is a lot of uppity white liberals in Charlottesville who are constantly talking about racial justice, race this, race that, and they can't even get black or Latino people to show up to their groups, but they are constantly talking about race and getting in other people's business. So that's what that is. I, I feel there's a very pressing danger with these people because not only are they trying to tear down statues of Robert E. Lee and Thomas Jefferson in Charlottesville, but this is a national movement where people are trying to tear down Confederate statues. Uh, Pepperdine University recently decided to tear down a statue of Christopher Columbus. And in my mind, these people, as much as they talk about racists and call people Nazis and so forth, they are actually the most like Nazis because they are eugenicists. What they're trying to do is tear down the history of European American people and replace it with cultures that are not from this area traditionally. So what they do is they tear down Thomas Jefferson, they tear down Robert E. Lee, and at the same council meeting they're passing resolutions to welcome illegal aliens into the community. And you've done a lot of work about that too, securing our borders, securing America from this threat to our American culture. And American culture is inherently diverse. American culture doesn't mean you're racist or a white nationalist or anything. American culture means what we have in America, we don't want women to have to wear hijabs. We don't want women to, you know, be beat by their husbands and all these other things that Islam brings. And Well, it's funny, these liberals talk about preserving all these different cultures that are from far-flung places. You know, if you had uh, a tribe of pygmies in the rainforest or something, they would treasure their culture and their heritage and their people. But yet, the way that they treat Southern Americans is so despicable. They spit on them. They don't want them to be able to carry the rebel flag, which is, you know, a symbol of their ancestry. They don't want them to have statues or to be able to tell their history. And a lot of these people are Yankees and carpetbaggers, frankly. They come in from these other states and try and tell Virginians how they can express their history and their culture. Right. There's also this uh, false narrative that conservatives are not a diverse people. But if we look at things like the Berkeley riots that happened for the second time this past week, you see a Latino man holding a, an American flag. Mm -hmm. But all these people, when they are unmasked, they're all white people. Yeah. Alex Jones here with a very important news update to anybody out there that wants to be prepared. But it goes beyond being prepared. Our bodies absolutely must have the good halogen iodine or we will die. And you look at all of the thyroid problems and all the people that don't have energy and that have all sorts of hormone problems. And from my research and a lot of just mainline research, it leads back to iodine over and over and over again. It's as important as vitamin C. If you don't get iodine, you die. But most people are just efficient, so they're low energy, they're sick. You gotta have iodine in your body so that your body can produce the hormones you need. It is the base to so many things. And since I got into iodine four years ago, we've helped change the entire paradigm by developing and bringing to the public deep earth crystals from seven to 12,000 feet of the purest iodine available. Other iodine comes from the ocean or from other byproducts of chemical facilities and is tainted. It's, 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 it's bound, it's, it's not absorbable. I tried it. And I had incredible effects even with dirty iodine because the body needs it. When you don't have iodine, it absorbs the chlorine, the fluoride, and all these other bad halogens. Do yourself and your family a favor and check out the importance of iodine for yourself. I think you're going to be blown away. And whatever you do, support the broadcast and get a bottle of Survival Shield Nation Iodine X2. Also, consult your physician because if you've been deficient in it or have other issues, it can have some dramatic effects. As for me and most folks I talk to, it's been a game changer in the positive column. But still, consult your physician because iodine is no joke. It's a key building block of the body. And if you haven't had it for a long time and suddenly have it, some folks say they've experienced things like... Uh, a detoxing effect and things like that. You've got to have vitamin C. You've got to have iodine to live. You've got to have water to live. Iodine is key. You must have it. But consult your physician first before you get 
powerful survival shield nation iodine x2 at infowarslife.com or call toll free we can answer your questions 888-253-3139 well tomorrow is set to be a very wild wednesday mass casualty drills are taking place all over the country indeed the world uh, april 26th tomorrow is when the uss carl vinson is expected to finally arrive off the coast of the korean peninsula and it also just so happens to be the day when operation gotham shield uh, which is a drill involving FEMA, Homeland Security, and a myriad of law enforcement and military agencies is set to conclude. They are going to be simulating a nuclear bomb blast over Manhattan, uh, but they're going to be holding a massive coordinated terror attack drill. And so they're saying they're going to go one step further and stage a very realistic emergency event involving multiple sites and actors posing as the casualties. So this is going to be taking place tomorrow. Initially, this Operation Gotham Shield was basically going to be uh, simulated on a computer. Now we are seeing that they're actually going to be having um, multiple sites and actors posing as casualties because they're getting ready for a potential strike. Uh, also, April 26, interestingly, is the day when the entire Senate will be briefed by Donald Trump and his four top defense and military officials on the situation in North Korea, this is something that uh, Reuters has dubbed unusual to have all senators present so that they can be briefed on the situation there in North Korea. So this to me is very troubling because the neocons are all salivating to get us involved in another war. We see what's going on with Syria, uh, but they're really putting out this message that North Korea is the biggest threat, the country that can't even get their bombs off the launch pad. These are the ones we have to be the most concerned with. And Charles Krautheimer, this neocon, is coming out making the case for a preemptive strike against North Korea. He said this during a panel discussion on Fox News that the proper course of action for dealing with North Korea could involve a preemptive strike launched by the United States. Take a listen. If we come to the final point where they have a nuke on top of an ICBM, yes, a preemptive strike. We cannot live in a world where Kim Jong-un can push a button and obliterate Seattle. We can't live in that. That's we don't live in that world. General Kelly say that's a policy that means that the Chinese have to calculate. It could be a bluff. But the Chinese and the North Koreans are going to have to calculate that that is a plausible threat. And what are they going to do? You know, I like some of the things that Krautheimer has to say. So I hate to dub you your new name, as far as I'm concerned, is Bat Crap Crazy Krauthammer because this is North Korea, okay? Like I said, this is the country that they cannot even get their bombs to launch. Uh, they can't get them off the launch pad. They're just like, meow, poof, they just crash right <laughs> next to the people's feet. So they're telling us this story that they are the most uh, vile, vicious axis of evil that we've got to deal with, our biggest threat. They're going to launch a nuke. It's going to hit Seattle. We've got to deal with them with a preemptive strike. Uh, yet then we're seeing that again and again, uh, their armored vehicle fails right in front of Kim Jong-un and it breaks down and then they're, they're, they're unable to deploy any weapons. So then they're kind of also pushing the story that the Pentagon has actually been able to hack in to uh, North Korea's nuclear arsenal and they've been able to kind of disable and break down some of their weapons. So, so they're like, well, they're really bad, but, you know, uh, that's why their nukes aren't working and, and their weapons because the Pentagon. So what is it? I mean, are they this ferocious uh, country that we need to have a preemptive strike with and just go to war? No questions asked which is what it seems like is going to be happening as we see these 100 senators meeting there uh, to speak with Trump. Um, this is also North Korea, mind you, the country that can't even feed its people and tells them that they should be thankful that they have enough grass because the country can't afford to feed them actual food. So just really crazy here. But North Korea is also conducting the largest ever live fire drill uh, as the U.S. nuclear sub docks there. So they've uh, conducted what various media outlets have dubbed its largest ever fire exercise Tuesday to mark the 85th anniversary of the foundation of its military. Um, this is a show of force, of course, amid growing concern that a showdown between the U.S. and North Korea may be imminent. <sighs> I don't really know what's going on here. We have the U.S. preparing to evacuate 230,000 Americans from South Korea. This is a drill that's being planned for June. 
Um, Donald Trump's demanded the evacuation of U.S. citizens from South Korea. It's part of a drill named Courageous Channel. The operation will take place in June, and it will prepare for the safe exit of around 230,000 Americans in the case of conflict. Tens of thousands of American civilians, including military dependents residing in and around the capital city of Seoul, could very well be caught in the crossfire if there is some sort of uh, altercation between the U.S. and North Korea. And so this is a major dilemma for the U.S. is how to keep these Americans safe. So now they're going to be having this drill in June. Um, so is this all just a show of force to let Kim Jong-un know that he can't continue to threaten uh, South Korea and China or the U.S. as he's been kind of running around the happy dictator there for a while? Uh, we'll, we'll have to wait and see. President Trump's made it pretty clear that there's a new sheriff in town. Um, so now David Ignatius has come out praising uh, President Trump and said the smartest thing Trump has done has been teaming up with China against North Korea. It's the smartest thing he's done in his first 100 days of foreign policy. Take a listen. Trump is right to think that the time to address the North Korea problem is now. The longer you wait, the more likely it is they will have a deliverable nuclear weapon that can attack the United States, and that becomes a different confrontation. So I think the smartest thing that Trump has done in, in the first hundred days in foreign policy is to figure out a way to work with China. Again, this is a North Korea who was given their nuclear centrifuges in the 90s by former President Bill Clinton, who made them promise not to use them to build nuclear weapons and promise us that you'll let um, in, in inspectors into your country to make sure you're not building any nuclear weapons. And then guess what? They've done the exact same thing now with Iran. So in a decade or so, we can ha be having this exact same discussion with Iran. It's perpetual war that our totally insane leaders have gotten us into. There is no end in sight for it. This is not why we elected President Trump. This is not campaign Trump, President-elect Trump, who said we need to get the U.S. needs to get its nose out of everybody else's business and make America great again. That's the president we elected. So very interesting to see what's going on here. Uh, we also have the U.S. now hitting Syria with sanctions over these chemical weapons attack. Uh, the Treasury Secretary vows to relentlessly pursue and shut down financial networks there. Earlier today, the United States Department of Treasury's Office of Foreign Asset Control imposed sanctions in response to the April 4th, 2017 sarin attack on innocent civilians by the regime of Sy Syrian dictator Assad. OFAC is sanctioning 271 employees of Syria's Scientific Studies and Research Center the Syrian government agency responsible for developing and producing non-conventional weapons. So again, they still have yet to produce any evidence to the American people to explain why they launched this uh, tomahawk strike there. Um, but again, fine, sure, you want to uh, levy some sanctions against the scientists there, make sure that there, any assets they hold abroad are frozen. What about Saudi Arabia, where we can confirm that chemical weapons are being manufactured and produced in Saudi Arabia and then given to Turkey, where they are being given to these rebels and moderate groups? And, you know, that was being reported by the mainstream media. What about sanctions against Saudi Arabia? What about freezing the assets of those scientists there who are actually coming to the United States to get training? <laughs> this is... This is what I'm saying. It's perpetual war. It's absolute madness. And here, I'm I'm just as surprised as you are, but I'm actually agreeing with Adam Schiff and uh, Virginia Senator Tim Kaine. They've written a letter to President Trump demanding that he provide legal justification for the tomahawk strikes on Syria. They they want to know what what made you decide to go ahead and do this? What is the legal justification for this strike? Now, of course, uh, immediately Chuck Schumer and Nancy Pelosi came out, broke ranks, and they praised President Trump and said he did the right thing. And that's when the media did a complete 180. And uh, all of a sudden, Trump's a great guy. He's not a Russian agent now that he we know he's going to take us into some new wars. Um, but he, uh, the two went on to write, the assertions of authority do not provide Congress with the information it needs to exercise our constitutional responsibilities. They don't provide a comfort to a public that fears deeper involvement in a horrific civil war at a time when the U.S. troop presence in the region is already increasing. 
So they want legal justifications for the attack on the Syrian government, not an afterthought, but rather as a first order consideration, something vital for the American people to understand. Incredible. Well, stay tuned. InfoWars will have all the breaking news, and we will see you here again tomorrow at 7 p.m. Central. I am very proud to announce the introduction of the highest quality InfoWars Biome Defense Probiotic. We wanted to come out with the largest spectrum of high quality known probiotics that have been proven to improve overall digestion and health and detoxification in the body. Biome Defense is an exclusive blend of 50 billion live and active cultures from over 23 different probiotic strains that are known to support digestion and intestinal function. Our researchers are confident that we have been able to develop what will be the leading probiotic on the market. Secure your biome defense in ultra strength or regular strength at InfoWarsLife.com today and get started supporting your digestive system naturally. We've been testing this formula for years, but this is the limited first run to the public, so please take advantage of it today. Support your own health and support the InfoWar.